Welcome everyone to Learning with Rev. In this video, we are going to be learning about the plot model utility inside of Keras. So the great thing about this is it allows you to see what your model looks like at a very high level, how it is constructed, to make sure all your code that you've, how you've constructed your model is correct. One note I am making here is uh, that uh, sometimes if you have not run this before, you are going to get an error. Um, specifically, it's going to be an import error. Uh, mentioning something about PyDot and GraphViz. Uh, you will need to install these, PyDot with pip and GraphViz with apt if you're running a Debian or Ubuntu-based operating system. If it's something else, uh, you have to use your uh, package manager. So in this case here, we are going to be creating a, a convolutional neural network with two inputs. Uh, both, in this case, if we are training an algorithm, uh, we would be feeding the same image in, doing uh, multiple different convolutions, maybe looking at it on different scales. But in this case, we have two identical uh, branches, except uh, that one of our convolutional layers is not uh, trainable right now. Uh, so if we were to train this algorithm here, uh, the weights of the branch B convolutional 2D would not be changing. Uh, then we concatenate both of them together and we make ourselves a little dense output here. Let's say we are classifying something. We're going to be compiling our model and to plot our model you just import it from keras.utils.plotmodel and you put your model object in there. As we can see right here, we have our two branches. So we have our first input, conv A, which we have named BNA for batch norm A. Just so we could see the left from the right, we have conv B and BNB. So this gives us that high level architecture. We can see, yes, we have constructed our model correctly. Maybe you want more information. Uh, so in this case, we are going to be going over some of the arguments that are available to this function. One is show shapes, so this will give us our input and our output shapes. So you can see what something like a max pooling or, bat or a uh, convolution is doing to the size of those tensors. Show dtype tells us the dtype of our tensors. Expand nested uh, would allow us to see if we had uh, more than these two models here uh, that we were nesting together. Let's say we had a sequential model as part of this. Uh, this would allow us to expand those nested models out. If you don't do this, it may just show model A, model B, or whatever name you may have given the model. Show layer activations. Uh, we'll confirm that our activations um, are, are here. So in this case here, we have an activation. There's no activation defined in our convolutions, so we expect them to be linear. Um, but we do have an activation layer which has an activation of ReLU in both cases. So we'll be able to see that as well. Also, if it's trainable or not, if each layer is trainable. So as we execute this cell here, uh, we can see the whole model out one more time. Uh, but in this case, we see a lot more information. So just not to overwhelm everyone, this first column here is whether it's trainable or not trainable. So that tells you exactly which parts of your uh, network are trainable currently. Next is your name. So we have input one, input two, as we before, conv A, BNA, conv B, and BNB. We also have the type, which we also had before as well. So I'll scroll up here. We had conv A, and then it was a conv 2D layer type. So all those are here again. Um, if it's relevant, we have our activation. So as I mentioned before, our two convolutional layers have linear activations. But our activation layer has ReLU as expected. Our dense layers have ReLU and softmax as we define them. Also, we've defined that all of our, or we're showing that all of our layers have float 32 um, tensors in them that they're operating on. Uh, next is going to be our input and output shapes. So the output shape of one layer is going to be the input shape of the next layer. As we can see, we go from 32, 32, 3 to 32, 32, 3. The convolutional layer uh, makes us lose our 3 by 3 convolution, causes us to, we could say, lose uh, 2 out of our 30, which is just how that math works out in both of these cases. And our max pooling 2D cuts our shape or our size 
right in half again, which is expected uh, when we are running a a two by two con or a two by two pooling. You go from thirty by thirty to fifteen by fifteen. Uh, one to look at here is our uh, concatenation layer. Uh, what we're doing is we see our 15 by 15 by 32, 15 by 15 by 32, so that's coming from the left and the right, and concatenate turns that into a 15 by 15 by 64. So you can think about this by just taking one of them and stacking it right on top of the other in that last dimension, and that's how we get uh, our output shape here. We take our dense layer um, and our final output. Uh, another note to make is we are in a Python notebook here, so it is going to be displaying it. Uh, but if you're running this from a script, a Python file, uh, it will be saved in that local directory uh, where you're executing from. Uh, so just one thing you can open up, it will be saving as a PNG file. And there is an argument that you can name that file. So you can put it somewhere else uh, using a local path traversal and uh, name it uh, whatever you want. Uh, so, I hope you learned something today. I hope you learned something about the plot model utility, and I hope it helps you all when you're constructing your neural networks in the future. If you learned something and you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.